Okay, so it's Friday night, and here is my Food Line Instacart. I was thinking how I did not plan on prepping anything, and if you saw my menu plan, you saw that I didn't. And I got thinking I have this beautiful new grill. Why can I not utilize it? Because I don't have to stand over the stove, and it's really quick, and I can get a lot done. So, Instacart to the rescue. I can just let this be working while I'm over here cooking supper, because I got to be over here anyway. So what I got was some boneless pork chops. And yes, I am in my own light. <laughs> they were on sale, so that's a pretty good price. Now, the chicken wasn't on sale, so it was $9.53. But I wanted the thin cut, so I just paid for it. Now, this squash, let me tell you, I asked for a half a pound of yellow squash, and that was like not. <laughs> this was like a quarter of a pound I wanted two zucchinis and look look at these <laughs> I wanted the I wanted first time roasting vegetables I wanted to try the zucchinis some whole mushrooms which <laughs> look at the size of those I'm gonna have to quarter those and some onion on the grill but I guess maybe that'll be enough to cover the grill I'll have to do it in two batches obviously <laughs> and then <sighs> My nemesis leaf lettuce. I like good old crunchy lettuce, but it keeps going brown on me before I can eat it. So I just bit the bullet and bought this mess. <laughs> Hopefully it'll last. So that is it for my little food line haul. Okay, now I am flying by the seat of my pants because I couldn't find where it, it's a what temperature to grill vegetables. And while I heated it, to 450 I'm thinking because you put it on high in the oven I'm like well wait a minute that might be too high so as I was fumbling around on my phone the fan automatically kicked in so it must have started getting hot so that's a feature that I didn't know about that's a, a nice feature now if you can see this is what I did while it was heating up that is that little bit of vegetables I showed you that is way way under too much for this little grill so I'm gonna do half and half what I did I cut it back to 350 I thought when I bake that's my automatic go-to that'll be my automatic go-to on here except for meats like I did the chicken and the pork chops I'll go to 400 so I've already sprayed it and it's gonna sizzle I know but it didn't because it, I guess it's not it's not wet like meat that makes sense can you tell I'm not a big grilling? I don't know these things. You know what? Yeah, I think I'll do it in two batches. So it doesn't steam. It's going to steam because I'm going to put the lid on it. But maybe it'll grill more so. I'm going to use this. I am not opposed. I, I use um when I cook something. Oh, when I do my air fried chicken, I use that, the butter flavored kind. I'm just going to use plain old salt because I don't want any other flavors. I don't even want pepper. Now let's just pop the lid on. I'm going to look at the clock right now. I just looked at the clock. And we're going to see how long it takes. So now let me go start my supper because I said I was going to do this while I cook supper. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> I can't even tell y'all a lie. <laughs> All right, now, as soon as I put them on there, I cranked that heat up to 450. I could just tell that was not going to be enough, when I was right. What I did was I came over here. I've already turned it off. Let me turn the fan off. I came over here every five minutes and stirred them around. That's all I did. After five minutes, I did it. Another five minutes and another five minutes. So these have gone for 15 minutes. I've tasted one of each, and I cannot tell a lie. They are absolutely delicious. Listen, this be <laughs> this beats anything I have ever roasted in the oven. They did not steam, except to the point that it cooked them. And they're not floating in their own juice. They are delicious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me get my pan. I don't know if these are going to make it through the week or not. I'll be honest with you. These may be gone tomorrow. Oh, I'm losing some. I 
I wasn't sure about turning them because you know I was not going to stand here. Y'all know me. Y'all know me. I'm not going to take extra <laughs> extra time if I don't have to. So I wasn't sure about stirring them instead of putting them on there individually and flipping them, but it, it worked fine. So let me wrangle these out and put the next batch in. And that's all I'm going to show you of the vegetables. And then when we come back, we'll cook some meat. How about that? Okay, now, before we go on to the meat, let me show you this bowl of roasted vegetables. And we're in kind of a funny light because it's dark outside and I just, I don't have, isn't that pretty? I'm telling you, these things are delicious. Now, this is going to be hard because I've just got my little, well, my bar is actually big, but it's, <laughs> you don't want to see, it's just full of stuff. So, let me set that down and I'm going to show you what I plan on doing with my chicken and my pork chops. I've got them laid out. There's six of each, so there's three, 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 and three with different seasonings. And as I put them on, I'll show you what we're doing now. I knocked it back to 400. I'm just piggybacking right off of the vegetables. I'm not washing it. Um, and, and I'll do all the meat, unless it gunks up too hard on me. I'm just going to keep piggybacking until I get it all done. And I cannot get six breasts on here, so I'm probably just going to do like three and three. I would do the pork chops at the same time as the chicken, but I'm afraid the chicken being thinner, it might not get done. So I've already seasoned. Now you can hear the sizzle. I don't know. Let's see how many we can get on here. I've already seasoned this one side so I could put it down. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go for it. You know what? I think I'm not going to go for it. I'm just going to... I'm not going to take a chance. So that one is the Trader Joe's Everyday Seasoning. So now I got the one side done. I'll go ahead and hit this one. Now let me show you I won't come back on and show you my next batch of um, chicken, but I will show you what I put on it. So my other three is what I just bought at Trader Joe's, the garlic salt. Both of those smell so good. Hold oh, let me put the lid on while I keep talking and running my mouth. Five minutes per side is what I did my chicken the other day. It was about as thin as this, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. So I will just show you the... All the chicken when it's done, when we get ready to put the pork chops on. How's that sound? Okay, this is really just a short clip. This is still the first chicken. But I can't remember if I cooked it for you the other day, if I showed you how it looked. See, it's already starting to cook up through. See the nice peel marks? I just couldn't remember. If I showed you what it looked, how, how far up it cooked in five minutes. So you can see it, it cooks pretty fast. So I'm going to let this go another five minutes and then I'll do what I told you. <laughs> I'll be back with the pork chops. There's our six pieces of chicken. I got two men folks over here in the background eating. If you hear any smacking and carrying on. <laughs> I made chicken broccoli alfredo and I think they like it. Y'all like it? Oh yeah. yeah. You hear that? Okay, I was going to show you. I told you I was going to piggyback everything. All I took was this paper towel. I meant to show you when I was doing it. This is how easy this thing cleans up. That's all I'm doing. It's not wet or anything. And it just comes right off. So what I'm going to put on here next are the pork chops. And I did the same thing. I did... I think I can get all of these on here. Now, we could have got more chicken on there. But it wasn't going to be too full pan full, so I just separated it by flavor. But we can get all these pork chops on here. Let me turn that sideways. I got to try to remember which ones are which flavor. These, if you've never tried Flavor God, he, he, he makes lots of 
lots of different flavors. Go, I don't get anything off of it. I'm just use it. But go check it out. He makes things like gingerbread seasoning, chocolate seasoning. It's really good. Oops, wrong one. So I'm using the honey barbecue on three of them. Then our trusty old Trader Joe's onion salt. That was a little heavy, wasn't it? I'm going to do these. I can't remember. I can look in my book. I can't remember how many minutes I put it on when I made them the other day. So I will let you know when I come back. But it is on 400. So hang tight. Okay, I did five minutes on each side. And I think the thickness of them, if you can tell through the light, see it looks maybe, maybe, I don't know if that's the meat. Because the other I did were about this thick. And I did five minutes and they were perfect. I'm going to go ahead and take them off, even if they are a little underdone, because pork does tend to dry out, and this way when we reheat them, they will still have a better chance of maintaining their um, juiciness. So what I'm going to do next, so here's my nice little pan of meat, tin, which if I pack the grill tighter with the chicken it wouldn't have taken me long but like I explained to you how I did it so each batch was 10 minutes so if you're just doing it for supper one grill 10 minutes there you go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them cool completely and vacuum seal them individually and throw them in the freezer that way when we need something quick it's already cooked and ready to go so I will just do that and be back to show you the final product Okay, this is real quick. So the TV's on, the dishwasher's going, I'm going to make it fast. This is what I got through when I did everything in the vacuum wrap. And I don't have any of the short rolls, so that's why I've got so much extra. But I have three of the garlic, three of the everything for the chicken, then three of the onion salt, and three of the honey barbecue for the pork chops. So I'm going to put them in a big old Ziploc bag. I have those two gallon ones. And just pop that in the freezer so one day when I need a little something there it is alrighty now we're gonna make our chip beef breakfast bowls and this is not a recipe per se but I just wanted to bring you along this little bit to show you how versatile these breakfast bowls really are like I had said in my intro I wanted to do the sausage gravy bowls I did before and I don't even know why this jumped into my head I guess thinking of what you can put in gravy so cream chip beef popped into my head so that's what we're doing today now let's see let me see what we're going to do first now I've already made my hash browns and I've already scrambled my eggs and we'll get to them in a minute what I'm doing right now I have two packs of the it used to be Carl, Carl Buttig but I'm reading on here it's just Buttig so two packs of the buttered beef, not the corned beef. That, that'll taste weird. The regular beef. If you've ever made cream chip beef on toast, you know exactly what these are. I grew up with it, and I love it. I just never think to make it. So I, my pan is screaming. My pan is screaming at me. I'm trying to, trying to time this here to where I had a lot of the mundane things ready, and then just, you know, throw this together. <laughs> think it's working too well <laughs> I'm trying okay so all I did was just chop that up um, real small there we go we're gonna get that sieve one hopefully it's not too much over my voice so all I really want to do is this is hold on I'll just come in front of <laughs> This is already cooked. You can eat it straight out of the pack, obviously, because you make sandwiches. But I want to put a good little brown on it, like when you make the regular kind. Now, I always make this in my homemade gravy. That's what we eat over our toast. But for this, I'm taking the less complicated route. Plus, I think it will set up better than a homemade gravy will. So my water was already boiling. If you don't have this is the Pioneer biscuit gravy mix. I didn't want to use the country gravy mix because it does have other seasonings in it. I just wanted the plain old white gravy. 
all you have to do, in case you have never used this, I want to show you how easy. You can use this gravy mix and all of them for like different kind of soups and chowders. You can use it for all kind of things. This is a cup and a half of water. This is a half a cup of water. Just mix the gravy mix in the half cup. And you know I'm going to burn my beef because I can't multitask. I just stir it up real good. And I, <laughs> now, don't blink because you're going to see how fast this comes together. And I'm sorry if I have to get in front of you. Put it in there. Let it come right back up to the bowl. Okay, I'm burning my beef. Let's slide that off. Okay. See how fast that made gravy? And that's as thick as I want it because as it cools off, it will set up even more. So, <laughs> instant gravy. If you have not tried the Pioneer mixes and you have it in your area, I highly recommend them. I love them. You don't always, even if you like to cook from scratch, you don't always have time. Do I like my homemade cream chip beef? Yes. I really do. I love a good cream gravy made in the cast iron frying pan. Can't beat it. But you can't beat this either for speed and ease. And it is actually very tasty. So let's find somewhere. <laughs> let's find somewhere to put this. Hold on. So I'm going to. I'm reaching all around y'all today. Let me come over at the top. I'm just going to add my beef to it. And guess what? Instant cream chip beef. Instant. Done. Let me find a, you know what? I think I can. No. Because what I'm going to do. Let's just stir this in. I'm going to put it in this measuring cup. Because I'm not going to weigh it. There are two cups of gravy. And I'm going to use a quarter cup for my serving. And a quarter cup is. I think three points. This is actually higher points than the country gravy. But when all this comes together, I think it's only like five points for the whole breakfast. I can't I can't think that's a bad deal. Okay, let's see. Let me hold it up and see what we got. You know, I can't hold it in front of y'all and see it too. So that little bit of beef did not, was not enough volume to make it more than two cups. It's, it's like right around two cups. So I'm just going with it and I'm going to use a quarter of a cup. You can use a third of a cup and it adds a point. But for this amount, you know what? I think I'm going to see the difference. I think I'm going to go for the third a cup. So that would be your discretion, however you wanted to point it out. But this is all there is to it, so it's kind of embarrassing that I'm doing this, but, well, it just is <laughs> it's what it is. Now I'm going to do the hash browns first. 104 grams of hash browns. Are two points and that is plenty for this breakfast bowl you could go up to like a hundred and forty five maybe for three points but that's way way too many you, you just don't need that many now what I did I went ahead and fried them cooked them up I wanted to make sure my husband had enough right so I measured them frozen I never know how to do hash browns so I just kind of Shoot, shoot in the dark. So I had like 550 some grams. Thinking I only need 104 grams. So he'll have the rest. And I'll make, because I'm giving him the rest of the gravy. I told him, I said, just let me do this. Let me go ahead and film this. And you'll have breakfast out of it. So, you know, he was cool with that. Um, I've already done three. 104 grams of hash browns. Two scrambled eggs. 
this is what I have left for my last 104 grams of hash browns. So let me show you when you weigh them cooked how much difference it makes in your weight. I'm going to burn that. Okay, 102. We're going to go with that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> you see what David has left to work with. <laughs> so, I needed 416 grams. Like I said, I started with 550 something. And that's it. A big old spoonful. So, I told him that was all that was going to be left. He said, it's all right. He'd do something. <laughs> he hadn't planned on getting breakfast anyway. So I think he's, he's cool with it. Now, the next thing is our scrambled eggs. And I did not weigh or measure these other ones. The green plan, you have to count your eggs so if you want to be more accurate for a point standpoint you can weigh them out but i think just eyeballing it i don't think a little bit here or there is enough to sweat weighing them so y'all know <laughs> i will take i will take the easy way is it the right way always maybe not but it's the right way for me because sometimes, if it's if you make it too complicated, you're not going to stick with it. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, now this is something really, I don't think, I can't think of a situation, but I'm not going to be weighing out eggs for the rest of my life. It's not going to happen. And if I'm not going to weigh them out later, I'm not going to weigh them out now. So, <laughs> eyeball it is. Now we have our 104 grams of hash browns, two scrambled eggs. Don't scramble them all the way because when you heat this up, it's going to cook a little bit more. I don't use cheese on this one because I don't think it would go good with the gravy. Now the only thing we have left to do is give it one third cup of gravy. Yeah, I don't think, let me get my little scraper, I want all that. I don't think a quarter of a cup would do, do you? No. And here again, you could weigh it if you prefer. That is totally up to you. Pretty much everything I cook should be called a totally up to you recipe because I don't I don't have a lot. And you can go on my website. Um, if you haven't already, go on my website and check out my recipes. But be warned, I even put a disclaimer. My recipes are not an exact science. I just, plus, you know, ingredients and things like that, we obviously know. But a lot of my recipes are just, they're like this. You just kind of throw it together. <laughs> so use how much ever of all the ingredients you want. So this started out as five when I was using a quarter cup of the gravy. If I remember correctly, as usual, I'll have it corrected everywhere else. And then just adding that extra point. So this is a six-point breakfast, which I was saying earlier, I don't think it's bad for breakfast in a bowl. This is so easy. You can grab it and go, so I don't have anywhere to go. But it still helps me to have it ready and don't have to think about it. I can just grab it out, heat it, eat it, and I'm done. There you have it. My cream chip beef gravy breakfast bowls and I hope they're good because I've never had it over hash browns and eggs but I, I got a sneaking suspicion they will be <laughs> so that's it four days breakfast this week leftovers from my husband and that'll wrap up this one okay now let's get started on the broccoli and bacon salad like I had said this is an oldie but goodie you think it might be too high in points. It's got cheese and bacon and mayonnaise. But surprisingly, it's not. When I went to point it out, I'm like, hey, I can get on board with this. Now, the difference is I used to use full fat cubed, good, you know, cubes of cheddar cheese. I'm opting for something different. I'll, I'll show you. 
first thing a head of broccoli I took the shortcut and used the broccoli florets still I cut them into bite-sized pieces and as much as the stem if you can tell there's not really any stems in there oh that okay those are hold on a second I'm not a fan of broccoli stems especially raw broccoli stems so however you want to cut if you want to leave them on leave them on I will suggest this one thing though if you buy them already cut like this even if you want to keep the stem on at least shave a little bit off the end because it real dry brown and I'm sure it would be tough when you try to eat it now to that we're gonna add I'm using the bacon I like the fully cooked from great value six slices this is one of those recipes do whatever kind of ingredient and how much of it you want to do so six slices of that I've already cooked it this is literally and these are my after <laughs> after Christmas clearance plates you literally put it on a paper towel 30 seconds and this is what you got crispy bacon for my cheese you use whichever cheese you like I'm using this light Havarti that I had got from Trader Joe's and it's one point for one slice I'm using one slice I played with this recipe you can up or down your cheese and bacon and play with your points that way if you like more cheese take your bacon down and vice versa now the way I slice this why why it's all spread out is I have more patience to take my big long knife and have all four slices and chop, chop them that way than if I had to stand here and peel them all apart in a stack of four so that's <laughs> that that's a little tip if you don't have patience just get you a long knife and just go on and go just go for it so all we got to do is add these to our broccoli and I don't know how long this will last in the fridge so I will eat it early in the week just to make sure you know we have it doesn't go bad I don't know how long the broccoli will stay relatively crunchy so just kind of toss that around to get it you know kind of even in there now that this is the only thing we have to do I use Dukes you know that now it makes your points high I calculated the recipe using Hellman's light I think it was because I think it's representative of most light mayonnaises but whatever mayonnaise you decide to use you put it on in there figured out this is a half a cup just a half a cup of mayo one teaspoon of sugar and then one tablespoon of vinegar I don't know how close that 12 ounce bag of broccoli is to how much a head of broccoli would yield so I just hope this is enough dressing to coat it we don't want it sopping you know like just floating in it but we do want all the pieces of broccoli coated I mean that's your flavor otherwise just sit down with a head of broccoli and go to town no thank you <laughs> we just gonna add this to it I got a a bigger bowl than necessary to give myself stirring room mixing room tossing room I guess maybe you toss it together <laughs> and that's all there is to it I wish I had weighed this bowl if I think about it I'll weigh my bowls I've if y'all saw in one of my videos I weighed my crock pot liners and instant pot liners and I have a list taped inside my cabinet door 
so that when I'm cooking and I forgot to weigh it beforehand for soups and stuff like that, I already know how much of it is the actual pot. Now this, if you can tell, it's not very coated. I personally, I don't want it saturated. I could use more, but I'm not going to. I think we can get enough flavor out of this and be, look at that, be satisfied. Now what I am going to do, because broccoli is, you know, I don't always weigh my stuff. I'll scoop it, me measure it. That is such an awkward shape. You're not going to get a full cup. If you say it's cut, the serving is a cup, you're not going to get a full cup just because it won't fit down in there. So we are going to measure it, and I'm going to measure it in ounces. I think I like the way this little sliced cheese separates in there. I think you'll get a little bit more cheese Ooh, sorry, in every serving than let me don't leave that. One day I was cooking something and I left that in there and it didn't quite, <laughs> didn't quite work well. So we got 19.6 ounces and this is how I'm going to deter determine the size. Not divide it, say how many servings I want out of it and divide it because you know what? Everybody's bowl is going to be different. This is what you want to do. Well, this is what I want to do. I want to say what size I want my serving to be and just go from there. That might not be the way some people want to do it, but that's the way I'm going to do it. Part of my portion control is determining what's going to be enough. And here's a practice. What's going to be enough to go on the side of my lunch? I think that's plenty. That is 3.5, 3 ounces. <laughs> Isn't that easier? <laughs> 3 ounces. I think that's plenty enough serving size for this. Now hold on because you know how I'm going to ask. Alexa. What is 19.6 divided by 3? 19.6 divided by 3 is 6.5333. Okay, we get six and a half servings out of this. So I will build my recipe. I will change the servings. I calculated for 8 because I really wasn't sure. And at 8, it came out to 3 points the way I made it if you used Helm and Light. So I will go back and, uh, of course, in the description in the recipe, you will have the correct points. So there you have it. I think I'm going to save that out with some plastic wrap. This needs to actually chill a little bit to get the flavors to all come together. And the broccoli will soften up on you a little bit. It's not going to be as hard and crunchy. So do let it sit in there a few hours just for it to taste the best. So I'm going to leave that one out. And that's going to be part of my lunch today. Okay, here's the second half of what I prepped for the week. I had already cut up my oranges. That, that was the Cara Cara and the blood oranges I got at Trader Joe's. I find I will eat them much more quickly if I already have them cut out like that. Here are our chip beef breakfast bowls. I went back and th the way I made them with my measurements, there's six points. So I have four of those Monday through Thursday. Here is our broccoli and bacon salad. The way I made it, calculating Hellman's Light, I went back to put in six and a half servings. It won't let you do a half serving in the recipe builder, so I did it as six. That half ounce, those are things like I was telling you earlier, I don't sweat. So this is a four point serving. This is three ounces. Uh, four points. I think that's good considering you got mayonnaise and bacon and cheese to cover up that broccoli. Hallelujah. <laughs> For things to make broccoli edible, then I already have 
leftover cucumbers and celery and carrots and onions that I chopped up last week. So I got that. I, this is one seedless cucumber. I just put half of it in little strips for eating. And then the other half I cubed for salads. And you can't tell in there, but that was a very wet cucumber. Unusual for the seedless cucumbers. That's where these little containers come in handy. Because see how that will drip? And instead of sitting there in its own liquid in a regular bowl, it will drip away from it and they'll last longer. So there you have it. That is the rest of my week. You've already saw my meat. I have it in the freezer. It's ready to go. And then this. That is what I consider a grab-and-go type meal prep. I don't really know what else to call it. Just grab-and-go. Grab-and-go. Grab some oranges. Scoop that out. You know, it helps me. It may help you. Give you some ideas to, you know, just think outside the box. I hadn't thought of this in years, literally years. I sure didn't think about it on Weight Watchers. But four points, I don't think that's bad. And if you don't, if you think it's high, just fill in the rest with zero point foods. There you go. But you got something that's got flavor to it. It's got flavor. I've already, I've already had a little broccoli. It's good. <laughs> so that's it. That's it for my meal prep this week. I hope everybody has a good week. Stay on plan. Eat your veggies. <laughs> All right. Bye.